Do these Roman sites just look like a pile of rocks to you? If so, you're not alone. The first time I went to see Hadrian's Wall, I thought it was a modern reconstruction because I saw the concrete in the middle. I mean, what did I know? My hobby was making beer, and preparations for the trip were really just about trying to figure out how much scotch I could drink. But I promise you, once you learn the basics of Roman construction techniques, these sites get a lot more interesting. This is my second video on Roman architecture techniques, and this time I'll be focusing on how to recognize Roman wall construction. It all started with Vitruvius in the first century BC, who wrote a book on the fundamentals of Roman architecture. I, I guess some monks thought it was interesting, and so they copied it and copied it and copied it, and 2,000 years later, we still have it. He's actually credited as the first person to have written the word architecture, probably just because his is the only book that survived. It's a really interesting read, as long as you keep in perspective that when he was alive, people only thought there were four elements being earth, air, water, and fire. And so he comes up with some pretty crazy notions about the chemistry of, of cement, and he thought that forest fires started when it's windy because the tree limbs will rub together. The very ancient architecture he cites, of course, is just stacking blocks, and we call that either ashlar masonry or opus quadratum. I don't speak Latin, so if I'm pronouncing things wrong, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is when the block blocks are cut very nicely and stacked on top of each other. There are two types. There is the type where all of the blocks are of the same height going up in each course, and we call that opus isodomum. And here I have a picture of the Severn Wall in Rome, which was, of course, opus isodonum. Uh, you can see all the blocks are nominally the same height. There are uh, some blocks where the long portion is facing us. We call that a stretcher, long stretch, sounds right. Um, and then the small face at us, which we call a header. The Greeks started this and the Romans picked it up and they would use different courses of headers and stretchers in order to build a, a strong wall. I also have a picture here of the temple platform at Cordoba, and this is also Opus Isodonum. The next is, of course, where the blocks and each course is not the same height, and we call this Opus Pseudo Isodomum. Here I have a picture of Hadrian's Wall, and you can see that the second level down here is much narrower than the other levels. It's a lot more unusual to find, but it is out there. Things get much more interesting when the Romans develop concrete. Vitruvius calls it opus cementicium, and basically if the engineers could make a wooden form to hold the concrete in place while it cured, and they got the physics right, there's a famous case where they didn't, but anyway, they could make some really impressive structures. The Romans didn't invent concrete, but they definitely used it a lot and they came up with some of the best hydraulic concrete in the world. The example, of course, is the Pantheon in Rome, where we have the largest unreinforced concrete dome actually to date, 2,000 years after it was made. But I think overlooked is really this gravity-defying series of annular vaults that make up the market for Trajan's Forum. So once they had the concrete, then they started making stone walls. Vitruvius said there are two types in his time, Opus reticulatum and opus incertum. Actually, the opus incertum predated him, he said. But of these two, the opus reticulatum looked better and the opus incertum was stronger. The opus incertum uses odd face stones embedded in the concrete wall. And this is a picture of the temple platform of Jupiter Anxer at Terracina, which is actually very impressive. And then there are lots of these opus incertum walls at Alba Fusens in Italy. Then for Opus Reticulatum, the stones are actually in a pyramid shape. You can't really tell because you just see the square facing you. Um, but then they're turned kind of on their angle, and then the pyramid is embedded into the wall so it gets a better bite of the concrete. These are all pictures of walls at Hadrian's Villa at Tivoli. You know, it, it, maybe it's more attractive, but I think it's just a matter of taste. I think they both look very interesting. Going into the second century, the Romans started doing a lot of brick-faced concrete and leaving the brick exposed. I think this stuff looks pretty good. This post dates Vitruvius, but it was given the name Opus Litericium or Opus Testaceum. 
there are, these are examples at Ostia Antica, just outside of Rome. Vitruvius actually said that for stonewall construction, the prices were estimated based on an 80-year lifetime. But for brick structures, it was assumed that they would last forever. And, and from these, uh, these buildings you can see here, that really makes the point. While they don't have doors or, or roofs or actually windows or, well, in some cases they don't have floors either, they, they definitely look like they could have been built in the 20th century. And they definitely look better than my college dorm at UC San Diego. Then finally, we have the mixed faces. This is a, a wall at Hadrian's Villa in Tivoli. There's a lot of academic controversy about what to call it, and my pronunciation is unlikely to help that. But it's either opus vitatum mixtum, or opus vitatum, opus mixtum, or opus listatum, which is actually a Latinization of an Italian word, listata, which I guess probably shouldn't be used. But, um, but this is a mix where the central area could be stone-faced, and the edges are brick, as in this Roman theater at Naples, or where there are bands like we have here at the temple platform at Manigua in Spain. I actually have a whole video on Manigua in Spain. It's a very interesting site. So this was obviously a very high-level overview, but I hope I did justice to the topic and it makes your next visit to an ancient site more enjoyable. If you like this video on ancient architecture or you want to see more on our experiences getting to Roman sites, which is my usual long-form content, please like and subscribe and, and I'll put a few more together. And then I'd appreciate it if you took a spin over to my shorts. I've been learning how to identify characters in ancient art by their attributes, which has kind of been a learning journey and I'm, I'm finding it a lot of fun. So maybe you will too. So thank you very much.